So my name is Jessica Hoffman and I am the Vice President of Animal Care and Welfare here at the Greensboro Science Center. So I don't know if you've noticed lately that we've had a little bit of a baby boom here at the Science Center. Um, so I'm actually really excited to share some of our births with you and talk a little bit more about them. So it first started with our white blotched stingray pup that we were really excited to bring to the world. And then that was followed by our Binturong kits, and then most recently, our Pygmy Hippo Calf. So these are all part of SSP programs with AZA. And SSP programs are a way for us to manage genetically sustainable and healthy populations for all of our AZA Zoo and Aquarium facilities around the nation. And actually, we also have some international partners. So our first birth that happened was our oscillated stingray pup. Uh, she is a female, so we're really excited about this cute little girl. Uh, and she was the offspring of our pair, that is Hodor and Papaya. Uh, so that is a pair that we actually got through uh, recommendations from other facilities to actually be part of this SSP breeding program. And the way that rays work, they do give birth to live pups. And so we had done introductions of papaya and hodor uh, a couple of times, but there's not a really clear cut way for us to monitor if papaya was indeed pregnant or not, um, unless we would pull her out of the water frequently to do ultrasounds and try to look, which we didn't want to disturb her. So it's sort of a put together, give them a break for a little bit, wait and see, put them together, give a break. So in one of those wait and see periods, we were surprised one morning that we had the pup there in the morning. So very exciting. Um, she is actually visible. So pups don't stay with the parents. Uh, unfortunately, they become a tasty little treat in the aquatic environment as soon as they're born. And so we wanted to make sure we got her out of that Amazon system uh, pretty quickly. So she is in a uh, separate tank that you can see through the view window next to our large ocean tank. And she's in there and we're just monitoring to make sure she's eating well, growing big. Um, and then we'll see if she gets put into a different exhibit here or she might go to another facility to join their SSP program. The next birth that we had was our binturongs. So our binturongs, and you might be asking, what's a binturong? Um, because that's usually our first question. Um, people look at them and are like, are they a bear? Are they a cat? But they have this sort of marsupial tail. Um, they're actually considered the largest member of the civet family. Um, and so civets are more weasel-like, so they do have a little bit more of those cat-like characteristics, but they do indeed have a long prehensile tail, um, and they are from the Southeast Asia region. So after the kits were born, we were actually able to observe and monitor them for quite some time. Uh, unfortunately, Susan never actually gave the kits enough attention that we needed to see, and after several hours, uh, she had never nursed them. So we then went in to check on their status and we did have some concerns medically and so we at that point made the decision to pull them for hand rearing. So when we make the decision to hand rear a species here, that is no small task. Um, it's a round the clock care for um, a good chunk of our husbandry team and it means that we have to do a lot of feedings uh, around the clock especially um, when they're very young they need to be fed every couple hours uh, we also need to make sure that they start out in a very stable environment um, so we use an incubator for that purpose they have to be at a high temperature and high humidity um, and so we have to make sure that they stay safe and sound there uh, we also actually need to make sure that they are peeing and pooping that's actually a big part of kit development um, actually for all of our neonates here. And so making sure that all those systems work, we have to stimulate them just like their mom would do and make sure that they're passing that food through. We also do need to actually make sure that we're feeding them the right kinds of things. We can't duplicate a milk diet exactly like what would be from the Binturong mom, but we have a lot of different other formulations that we've worked with throughout our industry. For Binturongs, we did go with a puppy-based formula, similar like you might find, but then we do add in some additional um, nutrients and supplements to that formula and it works well for them. We're seeing some good weight gain with them. They, they like it, they drink it well, so they're growing big and strong. 
Finally, I'm here to announce our biggest baby of them all, which was our pygmy hippo calf that was recently born. Uh, this was a pregnancy that we were monitoring with our first time mom, Holly, um, for quite some time. Uh, Holly was actually a very good uh, patient and she's very well trained. And so we were able to do ultrasound monitoring throughout the entirety of her pregnancy. Uh, we still weren't quite sure on a due date for her either because their gestation period has about a two month variance. And so we, we knew kind of a roundabout, but we didn't again know an exact time. So we had actually been watching and waiting for this birth for several months before we finally got surprised with it. So um, very exciting there. Uh, like I said, Holly and the dad, Ralph, um, are also first time parents, also part of a new SSP recommendation uh, that we built specifically uh, Revolution Ridge for to house this species and have a breeding pair. So we're really excited that we've already been successful in that arena. Um, Holly is being a fantastic mom. The calf is doing great. Uh, the birth went as perfect as we could expect it to. Uh, they actually are viewable on our indoor hippo exhibit right now. And most recently, the calf has actually started doing its swimming um, and it's doing cute little swimming lessons with mom. So it's probably the most adorable thing here. <laughs> Uh, so though it seems we've had a pretty busy month, uh, we might still not be done with this baby boom. We're continuing to monitor uh, several different species that have also been part of SSP programs. And if you remember recently, we had also done an artificial insemination procedure with our sand cat Layla. We're still not sure if that procedure had actually been successful or took or not. So she is one of those that we're continuing to also monitor going into the month of June. So. We'll see what June brings for all of us.